California is earthquake country. Here, one of the world's most active and destructive earthquake faults, the San Andreas Fault, marks the place where two huge plates of the Earth's crust grind past each other. Earthquakes on the San Andreas Fault shake heavily populated areas. The fault also runs through rural areas, like this ranching community about halfway between San Francisco and Los Angeles, near the tiny town of Parkfield. Here, scientists are conducting an unprecedented earthquake experiment, hoping to answer fundamental questions about earthquakes and earthquake prediction. We're here in Parkfield drilling a scientific borehole into the San Andreas Fault to directly make measurements of the physical and chemical processes associated with earthquakes actually at depth where they're happening. We can learn a lot about earthquakes from the surface. We can understand how they propagate, how strong the shaking is, but we can't learn how they start. To understand the mechanics that begin earthquakes, we have to go where the earthquakes occur. And that's the goal of this experiment. Unlike the parts of the San Andreas Fault that only rupture occasionally in large, destructive earthquakes, this stretch of the fault creeps along steadily and produces many small, harmless earthquakes. What is it about this part of the fault that lets earthquakes start so easily? Answering that question could be a major step toward knowing if earthquakes are predictable. There are a great many theories that have been proposed by scientists about how earthquakes get started. Is there a fluid pressure change that gives the earthquake a push, pries the fault apart a little bit and it takes off? Does the fault start to creep quietly a little bit before, get a head start and before it takes off and produces an earthquake? To really test these kind of theories, you have to drill into the fault zone or be very close to it to actually measure, for example, fluid pressure changes that might occur right before the earthquake starts. To test their theories, the scientists are drilling down to more than three kilometers below the surface. The drill hole starts on the Pacific plate and crosses the fault at an angle to reach the North American plate. It penetrates the fault directly in the zone where the rocks break repeatedly in hundreds of small earthquakes every year. Having drilled into the fault, the scientists are, for the first time, bringing up rock samples from an active fault zone at the boundary between two tectonic plates. Already, exciting discoveries have been made. By retrieving core from the San Andreas Fault, we, we now know what it looks like. What we found were thick zones of crushed up rock with a slippery mineral called serpentine, chunks of serpentine floating within this crushed up fault zone. Serpentine has long been suspected to be associated with how the San Andreas Fault moves in central California. We see it exposed at the surface uh, in, the, in the rocks that are adjacent to the fault, but now we know it's inside the fault and actually controlling how it works. Detailed measurements of the San Andreas Fault will continue for many years. We're going to deploy seismometers and other instruments and for 20 years we'll be monitoring earthquakes at this site with instruments located right in the fault zone. And with these instruments, we'll be able to watch earthquakes begin over and over again. And perhaps we'll see signs that the earthquakes are coming. Perhaps we'll see that earthquakes are predictable.